Did you know Austria is a federation? It's composed of nine states, each with its own governing and legislative body. This series aims to teach you a bit about each and every one of them, and today we'll take a look at Upper Austria. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. Ober Österreich, or Upper Austria, is one of the nine pieces that make up this wonderful Central European country. It got its name from the Archduchy of Austria, the nucleus of the Habsburg monarchy, which was divided into Österreich ob der Enns and Österreich unter der Enns, literally Austria above and below the Enns river. Upper Austria today houses 1.5 million people and is the industrial heart of the country, which created one of the most prosperous regions of the European Union. Being a federal state, it of course has its own government and parliament, superseded by the federal authorities. So, we have lots of money, lots of culture and a whole lot of history. Let's start unpacking Upper Austria, starting with its history. Like other parts of the country, Upper Austria was also once a Celtic land, who established their own kingdom of Noricum. This kingdom fell into Roman hands a long time ago, in the year 15 BC. Those Celts became Romanized, but after the empire began to crumble, the people of Noricum were left exposed to invasions. Huns, Visigoths, Ostrogoths, Slavs and many other invading people crossed or occupied the country one after the other. This pushed the remaining Romance people out of the area and Upper Austria slowly became a Germanic land. Later, Upper Austria was a centerpiece of the Habsburgs, a horrific scene of violence during the Thirty Years' War, got destroyed during the Ottoman Wars and was conquered several times by Napoleon. Fast forward to the 20th century and we see that after World War I, Austria, like many other countries, was in a fragile state and Upper Austria's city of Linz set off a small but significant civil war. On February 12, 1934, paramilitary troops belonging to the Nationalist Heimwehr, or Home Guard, searched Hotel Schiff in Linz, which belonged to the Socialists. This sparked an armed conflict that very rapidly transformed into the Austrian Civil War, which lasted for only four days, but resulted in hundreds of deaths, the outlawing of social democracy and the adoption of a new constitution, in line with Benito Mussolini's Fascist Italy. And as we all know, this was only the beginning of some troubled times for Austria. Linz isn't just an important historic city, it's also the state's capital. It contains some of the largest industrial groups of Austria and it hosts one of the busiest harbors on the Danube, so Linz generates a huge chunk of the Austrian budget. But Linz is also a beautiful and welcoming urban center. The place is full of malls, shopping streets and markets where you can buy anything you could imagine. Its historic center is characterized by medieval architecture, while around it you're introduced to Baroque, Renaissance and Neoclassical styles. Linz is home to a vibrant music and art scene and is a role model of cultural diversity. The city has a population of only 200,000 and yet it manages to maintain its position as one of Central Europe's most important urban centers. Linz isn't the only site worth talking about. Upper Austria is full of everyone's favorite medieval creations – castles. Take Burg Klamm, a castle that's been around since 1142 AD. The castle hosts concerts, a museum, a brewery and even a riding arena. Schloss Ort is an even more spectacular castle found in the middle of a lake. This one has been around since 1080 AD. Or perhaps you'd rather enjoy a castle that's still surrounded by a moat. Then there's Schloss Eistersheim for you. And these are only the tip of the iceberg, I assure you. Upper Austria has no shortage of castles, so that alone should raise your interest in this state. Usually, production buildings of any sort are anything but beautiful. Form follows function, that's the rule of thumb here. But there are some exceptions. Steierdurchbruck Kraftwerk is probably one of the most beautiful river power plants in the world, set in a scenic mountain pass. It was built in 1908 and at the time was one of the most powerful power plants in the world. 
but it was also built in the Art Nouveau architectural style that's largely been preserved to this day. The power plant is still operational, but at the same time it's an Austrian industrial monument that's an actual tourist attraction, which is not something a lot of power plants can brag about. Alright, time to talk about the elephant in the room. There's something that Upper Austria is well known for, and if you know your history, you already know what I'm talking about. The small town of Braunau am Inn was the birthplace of one of the biggest villains in human history, Adolf Hitler. He was born here in April 1889, while his father served as a customs official. The family moved out just three years later to Passau in Bavaria, then back to Upper Austria in Leondingen Hafeld. It was in Upper Austria that Adolf received his primary education, came in conflict with his strict father, who often beat him, and lost his younger sibling, which affected him deeply. He attended a technical school in Linz and Steyr, before finally leaving for Vienna in 1907. While Hitler's early years weren't picture perfect, he wasn't out of the ordinary for the time. He was a relatively conflicted young lad and was exposed to nationalist ideals, but so were most young boys of that period. Certainly no one could have predicted that this unknown wannabe artist from Upper Austria would be the one to ignite the bloodiest era in human history. Upper Austria also holds another remnant of National Socialism. Mauthausen, one of the most notorious concentration camps of Hitler's regime. It was built as a slave labor camp in 1938 by a private company led by a high-ranking official of the SS. The idea was to put prisoners to work in the nearby granite quarry. Initially, those prisoners were criminals, prostitutes and other offenders, but less than a year later Mauthausen became a camp for political prisoners. The camp was economically profitable, but behind those profits was the ideology of extermination through labor, which I'm guessing I don't have to explain. The regime at this camp was one of the most brutal, and the conditions were considered exceptionally hard to bear, even by concentration camp standards. Malnutrition, overcrowding, constant abuse, torture and beatings, and incredibly hard labor. This was in store for any prisoner that ended up here. Mauthausen was reached by a US Army squad on May 5, 1945, by which time the prisoners already took control of the camp. We only know of roughly 40,000 deaths in Mauthausen, because the Nazis destroyed most documents when they retreated. But it is estimated that up to 320,000 people lost their lives in the most gruesome conditions at this camp. Please leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Leave your comments downstairs and don't forget there's a Patreon page where you can support this channel. I hope to see you next time. Bye.